I've got Jess here from Collabosaurus. Um, Jess is the CEO and founder of an amazing business uh, called Collabosaurus. Um, I, my interpretation of Collabosaurus, and it's always good to hear from someone else, is that she really does look for, for strategic alliances and collaborations to help brands grow. So you're kind of like the dating service for brands? That's it, yeah. So yeah. Jess, before we start anything, yeah. you know that I'm the founder of Thankly and you know also that I'm a Bondi vet. So I have a really big surprise for you in <laughs> terms of actually what we're going to do and how we're going to actually film this. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Wait, you guys, we have to do this way. <laughs> oh my gosh. Don't. <laughs> I can't deal. We're oh going to have a little gosh. chat. You are the cutest little thing. Okay. Can I take him home? I know, right? Oh my gosh. This is everything. So it <laughs> might be a little bit him. hard to talk. Yes, I think it might be. <laughs> oh my god, that is like my perfect yeah. cat. Oh, I can't deal. I know. So now, so now you actually have to talk about clothes. <laughs> So did I get it right? Like, did I get what Collabosaurus is? And yes. how, do people, how do people work with you? Do they do it like via subscription service or like, what's the deal? Mm -hmm. So it works kind of like, it, just like a dating site for brands. So mm -hmm. it was inspired by Tinder and it's basically um, bringing brands together so they can access each other's audiences because it's so much cheaper to do it that way. I mean, you and I have a great partnership mm -hmm. and we can promote to each other's audiences and it's very complimentary and win-win and like-minded. So... Um, that's what we really like to foster. We like to bring complementary brands together so that they can do really cool stuff, engage their audiences and access new audiences as well. So it's a marketing tool in a Tinder style. <laughs> so I know a little bit about your story from previously in terms of where you've been and what you've done. And you've actually just actually done your first round of, of capital raising, which yes. is a massive achievement. So yes. there's actually not that many female entrepreneurs out there <laughs> that actually have done that. And yeah. um, they should, but they, but they haven't. Tell, can you tell us about that journey? Like yes. Well, I mean, it, not, the money's not in the bank yet, so I'm not celebrating just yet because mm -hmm. it's probably been one of the hardest things I've ever done because it's a totally new landscape, you know, and I ran into stuff that was very unexpected. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were talking about before um, how there's this perception of businesses that it's really easy and, yeah, go get it, and there's lots of great companies raising. So you think, great, it's going to be easy. Yes. There's heaps of articles out there as to how to raise and how yeah. to create a pitch deck and all that kind of stuff. But once you get into it, you know, it's just so different than <laughs> what you expect, and I found it very, very hard. And I'd imagine it, it's pretty intimidating. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, when I – so I tried to do a round of investment um, in August last year. Probably had about 45 meetings and I was like, you know what, I'll just take every meeting. I, it's practice, you know. And a lot of the time I felt very intimidated by being young and female, which I've actually never felt at a disadvantage. Yeah, right, until of, then. Until like then. And I went through all these meetings and because um, – we hadn't had a co-founder or a tech partner. You know, I had Nick involved at the mm -hmm. time, but he was just sort of working on Collabosaurus in a paid capacity. Okay. Um, and that was really frowned upon. And I just found that really bizarre that it was kind of like, you know, I built this thing on my own and surely that should be impressive. But on, on the other hand, you know, they wanted mm -hmm. more people involved. So we had to kind of take a step back and I went, you know what, I don't need investment stuff this. It was too hard. The business was suffering because I was spending so much time doing coffee catch-ups and all that kind of stuff yeah. and, you know, perfecting the pitch deck. So I went back to the drawing board and, um, you know, grow, grew Collabosaurus further so that, you know, I can have these meetings now and go, well, we met, you know, six months ago and we've grown the company this much since then. So that was really powerful. But, man, it was so different than I expected. <laughs> So um, I know a little bit about your journey, as I've mentioned before, and I think that one of the issues that we often see is that there's this whole idea that, you know, uh, fail fast, you know, and I've read it before <coughs> where I've always thought, you know, like, but, but how fast is fast? Like, how long should you actually persist with a business that people say resilience, you know, be resilient, 
keep going, you know, don't give up, like just get up when you fall over. But then there's a point in time that I think it's actually smart to say, well, dude, like just quit this shit. Like this is not working. So like, where is that point? Because I hear from lots of females entrepreneurs who ask me, you know, how do I believe in my idea and how do I believe in, in, in what I'm doing? Mm. And they say, you know, I tried before starting a a swimwear brand and it didn't work out, unfortunately. And I think Mm. to myself, well, you know what, you don't know, if you only did it for six months, then you don't know what three years would have held. So there's this perception, I think, out there that if you haven't been an overnight success and you haven't actually, you know, reached a valuation of two million bucks by, you know, eight months in, yeah. that you're you're failing. And yeah. and I don't know that that's necessarily the case for all businesses. No, there's absolutely more than one not. way to do this, yeah? Absolutely. And I think, you know, there is a time where sometimes you should drop certain things. Mm-hmm. Like it's not... But really, I think that should come down to not listening to anyone else. Listen to your own gut. You'll know if it's time to drop something like deep down and dig deep. Like if you've got this gut feeling that it's like, oh, it's not working and blah, blah, blah. Sit on that idea for a couple of weeks and then make a decision. But I mean, the amount of times I've thought about quitting Calabasaurus is ridiculous. Like, have, have you ever got to that point where you've thought, that's oh, it, yeah. I'm done? Like, this oh, yeah. Is... <laughs> Let's bring the kitten back. Um, <laughs> Um, so yeah, it was like a real low, low point and Calabasaurus wasn't making any money and it was just, you know, but I felt like I was onto this great idea and it had so much potential. And that's when Apple called me mm-hmm. and it was totally surreal. Cause I was like, you know, I was plugging along every day and feeling like I was just getting nowhere. And then Apple reached out and they were like, oh, can you speak at this event? And I was just all of a sudden just, yeah, let's, let's do this. And I am onto something and let's keep going. And I think the universe has this weird way of, you know, telling you which direction to go. And um, every time I have thought about quitting, something kind of a door opens or something comes along that makes me go, huh, okay, I'll give this a go and then see what happens. So, yeah. But, I mean, you mentioned before that, like, you had clients and stuff say, how do I believe in my business? Mm -hmm. But if if they're not believing in their business, I think it's probably not right. right. You've got to absolutely be happy to be working in this thing for, like, no money for five years, yes, you know, if you, you really so right. believe in it. Yeah, 150%. 150%, because it takes mm. a lot longer, you know. It's not an overnight success as much as it seems that way in the media. So, so I think you just, the, the actual point is you kind of just have to enjoy the journey. The highs and the, the highs are high and the lows are low. And you have yeah. to, as long as you can accept that those, that's the reality yeah. of not being an entrepreneur, then I think that that's, that's okay, right? Yeah. There's a really good Alan, if you go on YouTube mm-hmm. and look up Alan Watts, um, why life is not a journey. I think that absolutely changed my perception of right. stuff. It was basically that we're brought up and educated to think that life is this journey from A to B, from, mm-hmm. you know, start to success and mm-hmm. you achieve the things that you want to achieve. When really life is like music and you're supposed to dance and you're supposed to sing and you're supposed to enjoy it. You know, it's not from A to B. It's life is something that you've got to yeah. enjoy. Otherwise you waste it yes. trying to get to this thing that. And, is and one of the things I think head. that me and you probably connect quite well is that Calabasaurus obviously. Oh,